for any child born a woman. Everyone is going to have that experience until the story, as told in the New Testament, repeats itself in us individually. Then that cosmic Christ buried in us remains in his grave. The grave being that skull, the skull of the Lamb. And the day will come, you will know how to get in and out of it just with such ease. No effort whatsoever to get in and out. And it will be pliable just as she said, I put my hand upon your skull and it was the lamb's skull. And it was so pliable. So easy for you to move in and out. It's no effort whatsoever. You can try it now. You all came through either that door or the front door. You're familiar with the front door. Most of you come through the front door. Well, you can assume now by closing your eyes that you're standing on the street and looking at this place from the exterior rather than from the interior and see it quite clearly in your mind's eye. You want to go someplace and you can't afford it? Put yourself there. It's all in your imagination. And having gone there in your imagination and then seeing the world from that point, you're going to go there. But you say, well, I can't afford it. Who's asking you if you can't afford it or not? Who's asking anything about how you got there? If you're there, then you are there. If man is all imagination, he must be wherever he is in imagination. So you go in imagination. And having gone there and prepared it by viewing the world from it, then you return here, wherever you were physically. And then you are carried across a series of events which you do not consciously devise. And across this bridge of incident, you move under compulsion to fulfill the place where you are standing in your imagination. You do that in business. You want to go beyond where you are in business? Well, go beyond in business. Fill the office that you want to fill. Sit there. You don't fire the one who occupies it now. Let him get a better job. Let him go elsewhere to a still greener pasture. Grant him that. But don't deny yourself what you're doing. But do not forget who the true God is. And so when you hear the word God, the word Lord, the word Jehovah, the word Jesus Christ, do not let it in any way take your mind and let it dwell on something external to yourself. The minute that happens, come back, you're following the wrong God. If in any way it conjures the sense of an existence, something outside of you, well then you've got the wrong God. But when you hear these words, they're only reminders of your own wonderful I amness, your own wonderful human imagination. That is God. And you can test it. Test it in the simple things of life. And then from there, Put your hope completely upon the unveiling of this mystery within you. It's not going to happen on the outside. You will wait from now to eternity for some Jesus Christ to come from the outside as all of our evangelists are teaching. They're waiting for him patiently, hoping that they'll be in the first rank when he greets them and shake his hand. But I have news for them. They're all going to the cemetery before that. And all will return to little dust, these little garments that they wear. But they will not die. The being that is waiting will find themselves restored to life in a world just like this. And nine-tenths of them will not even know that they died. Because really, they haven't died anyway. Nothing dies. But they'll find themselves in a world terrestrial just like this. And still carrying on the, own, the old nonsense. But here you have been called. Called because no one comes unto me except my father calls him. And if you can take it, not everyone can take it, as you're told in the sixth chapter of John. At the very end of the sixth chapter, they all began to leave him. Very few remain. And those who left say they will leave him and never walk with him again. And he turned to the few who remained. He said, would you go also? And Peter became the voice of the few who remained. He said, to whom 
would we go? Hast thou not the words of eternal life? Then where would we go? It's hard. What you are teaching is hard. Hard to believe. Hard to accept. But if true, where are we going to go? Well, I am telling you what I am teaching you is true. I am not speculating. I am not theorizing. When I was saint, I did not know what it was I had to tell until it began to unfold within me. And that's what I had to tell. Tell it just as it happened to me. And the outstanding thing was the discovery of David as the Son of God. He is the Son of God. 